There was no universal understanding when it came to the universal bus pass for the student body of the University of Windsor as they struck down the measure two to one, leaving university and transit Windsor officials disappointed but not surprised. Andre Capaldi is the outgoing Student Alliance president for the University of Windsor, and he admits he was disappointed that the measure didn't pass and contributes the failed effort to the large number of students who utilize their cars to travel to the university on a regular basis. However, all is not lost for the student body leader who was satisfied with the vast array of the student body who decided to exercise their right to vote. I think it was definitely uh, the number of Khmer students on campus had an impact on the Universal Pass Pass uh, referendum result. And something I want to mention is that I'm very pleased with the fact that we had the higher vote, highest voter turnout in our organization's history. Over 41% or over 4,000 students came out and voted. And even though the Universal Bus Pass was defeated 2-1, to one. I'm still very happy that all the students took the opportunity to vote and to exercise their right and decide whether or not they would like the Universal Bus Pass. When the final ballots were cast, it was revealed that 2,254 votes fell on the no side of this equation. Meanwhile, 1,015 votes prevailed on the positive side of the ledger. Haraka Sheikin attends classes at the University of Windsor, and he says that his own personal financial situation was his main motivating factor for voting against the proposal. I voted against it. Uh, why did you vote against it, bud? Well, I drive to school and I not only have to pay for a parking pass, I have to pay for gas and, I mean, an extra hundred dollars in my pocket. I mean, I, I just, if I'm not using it, I don't really want to pay for it. By voting no against the U-Pass, it's a lost opportunity to make the transit process more seamless and efficient for everyone, according to Patrick Delmore, the Director of Operations for Transit Windsor. Um, we, we were looking forward to some real improvements that would have been seen for students and for all transit riders here in the city. So it's kind of unfortunate from our perspective that the uh, that the pass did not uh, get approved. And could you uh, tell me, I know that a lot of uh, students at the university uh, commute to uh, school by using uh, their cars. So uh, is that, that, that the main reason the initiative did, didn't pass? And is there any other reason to start? Thing that didn't pass it. Uh, well, I, I think there's a couple of reasons. One definitely was uh, the the student. A number of the students thought there should be an availability for them to opt out of the program. Uh, when we discussed uh, the options with the UWSA, uh, they wanted the best, most affordable price possible, and the way to do that is to include all students. Uh, there's not a single transit property that has a universal bus pass in the province of Ontario that does offer an opt-out. So we were being very consistent with what every other university across Ontario and across Canada is currently offering students and universities when they put together a U-Pass. So that was definitely one of the reasons. Um, I, I think a lot of them also um, felt that they wanted to see improvements to our service before they voted in favor of, of a U-Pass and uh, unfortunately that's just not possible without the uh, influx of funding. Yeah. yeah, so what we had committed to do was that the net proceeds from the U-Pass would be put to, back into improving the service. Uh, the students wanted to see that beforehand, which which isn't possible based on our operating budget. If the bus pass had been approved, all full-time undergraduate students would have had to pay an additional $90 a year for a bus pass from Transit Windsor. For CFTV, I'm Kevin McShane.